In this video we'll take a look at a piece of vintage test equipment, the Heathkit IM5225 FET multimeter. As you may know, Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their products covered a wide range, but electronic test equipment was how they started, and it was one of their largest product lines. They were renowned for the quality of the instruction manuals that allowed someone with no formal electronics experience to assemble a device at a substantial cost savings over factory built units. As well as gaining the satisfaction of having built it, the owner could typically maintain and repair the unit. At one time a very large and profitable company, Heathkit went through different ownership over the years and several bankruptcies before leaving the kit business entirely in the early 1990s. More recently, the brand has been revived and again offers a few kits. You can see the details at their website, heathkit.com. But enough history, let me give a little background on meters. Many specialized types of electrical meters exist. A popular type are those that can measure voltage, current, and resistance. The simplest form is the volt ohm milliammeter, or VOM, which has been around since the late 1800s. It generally consists of a sensitive meter movement and a switching arrangement to select series and shunt resistors to support different voltage and current ranges. A rectifier circuit will also allow AC measurements to be made. Many can also measure resistance by applying power to a resistor under test, typically using an internal battery. Here are a few representative examples of VOMs. The main limitation of this design is that because the meter is powered by the circuit under test, it can load down the circuit in some cases causing inaccurate measurements or causing the circuit not to operate correctly. An improvement was the vacuum tube voltmeter or VTVM which used vacuum tube amplifier circuits to present a high resistance, typically 10 or 11 mega ohms, to the circuit under test and avoid loading it. With the advent of solid state electronics, meters that use transistors rather than vacuum tubes were introduced, typically using field effect transistors or FETs which like vacuum tubes, have a very high input resistance. Heathkit offered many models of VTVMs over its history, as well as several VOMs. In fact, if you combine the various models, which were essentially the same circuit, the VTVMs were Heathkit's top selling and longest running product. They also offered some more modern digital multimeters before they left the kit business in the early 1990s. The Heathkit IM5225 is a solid state multimeter using field effect transistors. It was the only meter of this type offered by Heathkit and complemented their range of VOMs and VTVMs which also continued to be sold at the same time. A similar looking model was the IM5238 which was intended only for measuring audio frequency AC voltages. The IM5225 was offered from 1977 to 1981 at a list price that ranged over that time from about 120 to 170 US dollars. It was sold as a kit that the user assembled. The SM5225 was a factory assembled and calibrated version of the same meter, which typically sold for $100 more. The IM5225 can measure AC and DC voltage and current, as well as resistance. It's AC line powered with no need for batteries, unlike most VOMs and VTVMs, and is switch selectable for 120 or 220 volts AC line voltage. It's solid state, requiring no warm up time. The case is quite deep, but takes minimal width and height on the workbench. The input leads are floating with respect to ground, and the meter responds to DC voltages and current of either polarity without swapping the leads around. The polarity is indicated by two red LEDs on either side of the meter. Its high input impedance, 10 mega ohms, is similar to that of VTVMs and minimizes loading of the circuit under test. The specifications are the following. Note that the accuracy depends on how it's calibrated, which I discuss later. The accuracy of the built-in calibration standard is plus or minus 5%. DC volts can be measured on 9 ranges, 0 to 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 1, 3, 10, 30, 100, 300, and 1000 volts DC full scale. Input resistance is 10 mega ohms and is spec'd at plus or minus 2% accuracy. AC volts supports the same 9 ranges with an accuracy of plus or minus 3% for 60 Hz sine waves. It responds to the average value of the rectified waveform and is calibrated in RMS voltage. Input impedance is 10 mega ohms with about 100 picofarad input capacitance. The frequency response is 10 hertz to 100 kilohertz, going down to 50 kilohertz on the 1000 volt range. It also has a scale for showing AC voltages in decibels based on 0 dB being 1 milliwatt across 600 ohms. DC current is supported over six ranges, 0 to 0 0.01, 0 0.1, 
1, 10, 100, and 1,000 milliamps full scale. Accuracy is plus or minus 2% except for the 1,000 milliamp range where it's 3%. AC current can also be measured using the same ranges as DC current where the accuracy is plus or minus 3% and 4% on the 1,000 milliamp range. Frequency response is 10 hertz to 100 kilohertz going down to 50 kilohertz on the 100 and 1,000 milliamp ranges. Resistance can be measured on seven ranges times 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, times 100,000, and times 1 million. The center of the scale reads 10. Accuracy is plus or minus 3 degrees of arc on the times 1 range and plus or minus 2 degrees on the higher ranges. There is a low ohms resistance range for testing semiconductors that could be damaged by higher voltages. The unit applies approximately 0.078 volts on the low range and 1.55 on the high, which is high enough to test diode and transistor junctions. The meter is a 4.5 inch 200 microamp movement. It can withstand an overload of 700 volts AC or 1000 volts DC on the 1 volt and higher ranges and 220 volts AC or 300 volts DC on the lower ranges. There's a 2 amp input fuse protection as well as clamping transistors on the input. The unit's rated to operate over a temperature range of 0 to 50 degrees C or minus 32 to 122 Fahrenheit and storage from minus 40 to 70 C or minus 4 to 158 Fahrenheit. It weighs 5 and 3 quarter pounds or 2.61 kilograms. After assembly, the unit required calibration. You can calibrate it against precision DC and AC voltage standards if you have them, or do what they call basic calibration without needing an instrument if standards are not available. Basic calibration uses two built-in voltage references provided at two test points. You adjust the meter for specific readings using these references. Precision calibration uses a voltage reference at two voltages to calibrate the unit. The user must have a suitable voltage reference or a variable power supply and another calibrated meter to calibrate it against. If you have a 1 kHz sine wave generator, an AC voltmeter or oscilloscope, these can be used to calibrate the frequency response adjustment. As well as assembly, the manual had extensive sections on testing, calibration, theory of operation and troubleshooting. It's about 100 pages in length including fold-out diagrams and schematics. On the rear panel is a wired power cord, the 120-220 volts AC power selection switch, and a terminal connected to the AC ground. The meter inputs are floating, so you can connect to ground here to reference it to AC ground. The unit has a carrying handle on top, and the standard Heathkit stick-on rubber feet are on the bottom. I should note that the only Heathkit models I'm aware of that use the same case were the similar looking IM5238 AC voltmeter and the IT5235 TV yoke and flyback tester. At the front are two banana jacks for the input leads. The original kit included the parts for basic test leads with banana jacks and test probes. These ones are not original and were borrowed from another Heathkit meter. There are four press to activate function switches. The top three only allow one to be selected at a time. The AC switch is for selecting AC voltage and current ranges. The DC ohms is for DC voltage and current ranges and resistance. The ohms low voltage is for the low voltage resistance ranges. And the red switch is power on off. The range switch selects the voltage, current and resistance ranges. It has 24 positions with a couple of unused positions at the top. The red concentric knob is for adjusting for zero on the resistance ranges when the test leads are shorted. At lower left is a trimmer adjustment for setting the zero value. It needs to be adjusted occasionally. The meter has scales for ohms, which must be multiplied by the corresponding factor for the range, and scales marked from zero to one and zero to three for the current and voltage ranges. It also has a decibel scale from minus 20 to plus 2 dB, which needs to be added to the indicated decibel value shown on the voltage range switch to convert to dBm. Red LEDs on either side of the meter indicate the polarity of the measured DC voltage or current and are not used for AC or ohms. Let's take a look inside. The construction uses one printed circuit board and a factory assembled wiring harness. Most parts are on the PCB except for the front panel controls and meter. 
Also off board is the high voltage AC wiring for the power supply. It's fused on the AC line and there's another fuse on the input. The range switch is a complex 5 gang 24 position rotary switch with a concentric ohms adjust pot mounted at the end. It uses one op amp IC, two voltage regulator ICs, eight transistors and 13 diodes. The op amp is in a transistor style case but has eight leads. They're formed to insert into an eight pin dip socket. The same op amp is also available as a dip package. There are several trimmer pots and one trimmer cap that need to be adjusted during calibration. Note the ferrite cores to block RF signals from affecting the meter readings. One is on the input leads and another at the meter. Operation is pretty straightforward. The test leads connect to the plus and minus inputs. Turn the unit on using the power switch. Press the AC button to measure AC voltage or current or DC ohms to measure DC voltage or current or resistance. Press ohms low voltage to measure resistance using the low test voltage. Here I'm going to measure DC volts connected to a small power supply. Then select the desired function and range using the rotary switch. It's good practice to start on the highest range and work down until you get a reading in the upper half or so of the scale. Either the 1 or 3 meter scale is used depending on the range selected. For DC measurements, the polarity is indicated by the red LEDs on either side of the meter. For resistance measurements, set a suitable range, then adjust the ohms adjust knob for an infinite ohms reading on the meter. I'm not actually able to adjust for a full scale reading. I'll explain why later. The meter's input leads are floating and not referenced with respect to the AC power line, case, or chassis ground. This is a nice feature and it's not the case for some AC powered meters like Heathkit VTVMs and almost never true for oscilloscopes. Note the use of the same input jacks for current and voltage is somewhat dangerous. Inadvertently switching to current while measuring voltage will short the input. Most modern VOMs and DMMs use separate jacks to reduce the likelihood of doing this. I bought the unit in May of 2018 from a local Ottawa seller on Kijiji. He didn't build the kit originally and he had had it for the last 10 or 15 years or so in his basement. It didn't come with a manual or test leads. He said it seemed to be working but was not very accurate. He had taken a quick look at it and didn't see any bad components. My hope was that maybe it just needed calibration. Examining it, it was very clean inside and out and the construction quality was good. I confirmed that it was reading low on all ranges, about half of the correct meter readings. I found some full copies of the manual on the internet. Going through the calibration procedure, I was not able to get the meter to read anywhere close to full scale. I tested all the components, resistors and capacitors, R146, a 100 ohm trim pot, measured high at about 168 ohms, so I replaced it, but it made no difference. Most voltages appeared to be correct. I swapped the op amp with another one and that did not help. Then I noticed that the resistance of the meter was much higher than normal. It's shown on the schematic as having a resistance of about 700 ohms, but measured about 10 times that, 7500 ohms. That would explain the problem. The meter would not provide accurate readings with this high resistance. I opened up the meter and examined it inside but didn't see any problems like poor connections that I could correct. Having a high resistance is strange. I'm not sure what would cause that. Possibly oxidation or an overload at one time. It's not really feasible to repair it. Unfortunately, the meter movement is one of the unique parts in this unit and almost impossible to replace. I found several 200 microamp meters on eBay but it would be hard to find one that's a reasonably close fit to the size. It would need to fit the case, accommodate the polarity LEDs, and fit the existing meter scale or I would have to reproduce a new one. I think my best option is to keep looking for a meter unit that's being sold for parts or just the Heathkit meter movement to show up on eBay. I have both the Heathkit and manufacturer's part numbers for the meter. This meter is somewhat unique being the only Heathkit bench FET multimeter. In terms of accuracy, size and weight and ease of reading it can't compete with a modern digital multimeter 
but there are occasions where an analog meter is useful, such as adjusting signals for a peak or a null, or to see slowly varying voltages. This meter has the advantage over VTMs that there's no need for warm-up or batteries, and offers a higher input impedance than VOMs. So my hope is to eventually find a replacement meter movement so I can restore it to proper operation. If so, it may find a regular place on my test bench for the times when I need an analog meter.